Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about Arcanum's random encounters. This is a, not a follow-up, but a parallel to the video I did on Fallout's random encounters. A few people asked me how Arcanum worked and how different it was and how we handled certain special random encounters that happened at a particular time of the game. I will admit that when the, when these questions came in, all I could remember is it had something to do with Arcanum's timed event system. We had a really complicated timed event system, which is basically a queue of events that any system in the game could throw things into, and they could be either real time, which is based on the actual time and going on, or it could be game time. In fact, there was a second timer called Game Time 2. One of those was affected by pauses in the game, and the other one wasn't. Um, so I went in there, and I did find the link to Random Encounters, which, oddly enough, weren't in their own module. They were tacked into a UI module, so bad design on my part. But I did find out exactly how they worked. And I will go through that now. So Arcanum's random encounters were set to occur between 300 and 700 game minutes, which works out to between every five hours and 11.6 hours. It would check for one. And it didn't guarantee one would happen, but... That's when it would check. That's how often it would check. And then whether the checker or not was successful, it would reset the next timer for another 5 to 11.6 hours. Which means in a 12-hour period, you might have two encounters because they both did it at 5 or 6 hours. Or you might only have one. So the uh, random encounters were only allowed if you were currently on the world map. Not the UI, but you were out on a sector that was part of the world map. Basically, they were specifically disallowed in any place that had a town map. So think of it as if you were standing in a sector and if you hit the town map button, if a town map came up, you could not have a random encounter there. If it didn't come up, then you were good to go. Now, I said this is it whether or not you were in the world map UI. The, uh, a random encounter could happen whether you were fast traveling via the world map and remember, this time sped up when you did that, and this is all based on game time. Or whether you're walking those sectors manually, which you could do. You could walk between any two points on the world map and travel through every sector in between. They would also happen if you're just standing there, because it only paid attention to the passage of game time. Interestingly, there was, in the uh, encounters, and I'll talk about that in a second, there was a frequency, which is what's the chance of this happening, and would just drop down that list of creatures checking the frequency until one triggered. Meaning, if designers wanted something to happen more often, they moved it near the top of the list, and they increased its frequency. The frequency was automatically increased if you were sleeping. Meaning, as it went down that list, all the frequencies that are in there were automatically adjusted upward if you were asleep. So something that might not have encountered you or come at you when you were awake would do so if you were asleep. This was partially realism, partially funism, and partially the hand of the designer basically telling the player, you should probably sleep in an inn or a building or even a dungeon. But if you're going to sleep out in the wild, good luck to you. The checks were done based on your exact location. So that was sector and tile. You know, the every location in the game had a very unique number that specified it. The checks were done by that. There was default encounter charts that we made that were based on the terrain of the sector you were on. And that's the base terrain. And also time of day. So like a... Light forest during the day would have a different encounter chart than a light forest at night. Same thing for desert, for coastal, 
for planes, for grassland, stuff like that. So they're, they're all different default encounters. Those encounters also had what were called a power setting, which was set by the designer to say, basically, is this an easy encounter, an average encounter, or a powerful encounter? And then they had the frequencies I mentioned, which is what, what was checked against, what was literally like rolled against to see if that encounter triggered. Now, the designer had access to a, a variety of overrides. And what that meant was the designer could put a point with a radius and say, if an encounter happened within this point and radius, here's a default table to use instead. People would use this for things like they'd make ruins and it didn't really have a town map. It was just some ruins that you stumble across, but they wanted that place to be if you pass through it, you're more likely to encounter like skeletons or zombies. So you would put a point on the ruin, put a small radius on it, point it to a table that was full of undead. Now, there's always a chance that you might be in multiple circles. Two circles may overlap. The way that was done is if you appeared in multiple circles, the smaller radius circle always took precedence. The idea being it was smaller, it was more concentrated or whatever than something that was bigger. If by chance there were two circles that overlapped that were the same radius, it would break ties by the distance. And if that was exactly the same, it would just, whichever one was, was detected first. I don't think that I don't think the second tiebreaker ever got triggered by any of the designs we put together. Now, the encounter chart, um, it specified the creatures and how many numbers. So you could have a one set of creatures, you could have a mixed set of creatures, and how many of those should be created. And it was random. When they were created, they were spawned in a certain distance from the player. Then equipment was created on them or loot. Um, it would specify like if it was people, if it was bandits, they would like, okay, they get this armor and this weapon and it's wielded. If it were just creatures, they would have loot. Uh, I believe it could even spawn in a loot container, but I'm not sure about that. They were also arranged in a formation. There was a function that you could call that would scatter them because we picked a point away from the player, but we didn't want them all standing on each other. So they would spread out into a formation. Interestingly, and I forgot about this, and this is why I always like to go back to the code. These encounters tracked how many times they were triggered. We did this because remember I put script overrides on everything. So that was true for, Hey, an encounter just triggered. If you want to run a script that way, designers could say, hey, I only want this particular encounter to happen so many times. So what would happen is that script would call, they would check against some max, and then they might delete that override. So once you encountered so many special encounters in this area, it could delete itself. Or they may just want that information. Maybe they want to say every time you encounter this, there's an extra creature, or when it passes a certain threshold of how many times it's encountered, a... A uh, boss creature appears in it. You had all this kind of control over what you wanted to do. Now, somebody else, when they asked about random encounters, specifically said, well, how did you handle special things like the Malachian hand showing up? You know, by the way, spoiler warning for a 20-year-old game. Um, the way that worked was, I already talked that there were encounter overrides, which worked on specific areas of the game. Well, in addition to those, because this whole thing worked through the timed event system, a quest or a story state could add in timed events. So you could have a timed event that only happened when a certain quest had been completed or while you were on a certain quest or when the game was in a particular story state. Remember, there were 27 story states in Arcanum, so we had pretty specifically defined where you were in this nonlinear storyline, which of the major events, because remember I said it was like a football, there were 
There were certain points you had to pass through, but how you got there was up to you. Those 27 points were defined, and the, at any time a script could ask where they were, where the player was in that story. These were used for things like when you got far enough along in the game and you had triggered the Malokian hand to be chasing you down, to the assassin guys, they would just show up. Um, and when they did, they would show up, they would act like a random encounter, and they would go and they'd tell the random encounter system, push your time out a certain amount, because they weren't created by the random encounter system. But what I didn't want to happen have happened was you had a random encounter from one of these quest or story states, and then a minute later you had a real random encounter. So whenever one of they ha those happened, it pushed out the random encounter timer a few more hours. I did find a couple comments of, of code that hadn't been done. I'll give you an example of one of them that I understood. There was a, a check that was commented out and there was a programmer name next to it saying, didn't have time to do this, which said, if a random encounter was called for in a sector that already had creatures spawned on it, the random encounter was delayed. Basically, it, it, before it was even rolled, it was just saying, you know what? Push that random encounter out a bit, uh, the check to do a random encounter out a bit, because what we didn't want to do is you enter a sector which has full of skeletons or maybe, you know, some other kind of monsters, and boom, we throw a random encounter in on it. Now, personally, I would think that would be cool if that would happen, because they may not be friendly to each other, so you may have one of those encounters that you show up in, and they're fighting each other. Don't know if anyone ever saw that. I never saw that, just because the chance of you being in an occupied sector that didn't have a town map that had creatures that you hadn't already killed and a random encounter triggered at just that moment was very small. But I'd love it if anyone ever saw that. And then one last thing I want to mention is random encounters in Arcanum are not equal to monster generators. Monster generators are a totally different thing. Uh, they were basically an object that you could place in the world that inside of it had a, a, <coughs> a data structure very similar to a random encounter which was, here's a list of creatures, uh, here's what they they wield or have as loot, and here's a timer. But the way monster, monster generators worked is they were placed in a particular location, and then that location was a mon monster spawner. So it would get called periodically based on its own timer, and it would check, and you could have a script override to go, I want to check time of day, I want to check to see if the player's in a particular quest state, I want to make sure this hasn't happened so many times. You could check all that, and then if it if it passed all the checks, it would create a creature or a set of creatures. We use this in a variety of places um, in the game, both out in the world and in dungeons, basically to have an endless supply of monsters until the player did something that would then meet a condition for the monster spawner to stop spawning. Okay, I think that's all the ways that creatures can be randomly generated in... Arcanum that aren't being, of course, summoned by a creature that has a monster summoning spell. I hope uh, it was fun to hear about this and contrast it to how we did random encounters, which were a totally different system in Fallout. And I'll provide a link to that video below.